G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I've got a new little needle keep cover for you all. I enjoyed making the little house ones so much and I think so many of you have. So this time we're going for a little vintage camper caravan and always a popular design. And this one is so sweet and easy, great for gift giving. Little peek inside there, all sorts of goodies in there and uh, very quick and easy to make. So you'll just need to find your free pattern templates and they are in the description box below. And I'll also put that link number one in the comments so that's easier to find. Make sure when you go to print those pattern templates out that you set your printer in the settings to print at actual size so that it doesn't resize any of those pattern pieces. We need them to be absolutely spot on. So let's get busy making our little vintage camper needle keep. Now let's get started by having a look at what we're going to need to make this little needle book cover. So what I've done is I've cut my outer cover and my inside cover with what I call in, in felt fabric. And felt fabric is simply a piece of print fabric fused to felt using fusible webbing. So now this project is quite long and it's actually longer than your regular felt rectangles. Um, now if, if you're working with yardage of felt, you're okay. You can go ahead and just cut that, that whole piece. You find that you've got your pattern template because of only being able to offer you patterns that fit on an A4 size sheet. I have actually created that little template and you just need to place that one on your prepared felt fabric trace around that one, flip it over and trace around the other side, making sure you've got that nicely centered in the middle. Um, now, my because my felt isn't long enough to accommodate the whole piece, all I did was I took my two pieces of felt and I met them up in the center. And then with my fabric that has my fusible webbing applied, I ironed it onto the back there and then when I cut out my pattern piece I could line it up with the center there where we're going to be stitching the center anyway so cut my pattern piece out by flipping it over through the center there so if that helps you like I said though if you're working with felt that's all one big piece you're all good so and making up felt fabric is very simple we do have a video that shows you how to make up felt fabric I'm going to put the link up the top there for you so you can check that out so I've chosen for this one, I'm going for very, very retro colors because of the style of the caravan. So I've got my print this time on the outside, felt on the inside, you won't be seeing that felt. And I've also chosen a print for the inside of the cover. So basically what we're going to have, you can see that line there, that join. Basically what we're going to have is our little book that is going to look like that. That's my inside. So we're going to have all sorts of little pieces that we add here. So to begin with, we're going to be needing our reinforcement that strengthens our whole little needle book. This time I'm going to be using stiffened felt, which I find readily available at, uh, at my local craft store. If you can't find stiffened felt, you're most welcome to use a matte board or very firm cardboard. I used a matte board in this little needle book and it gives you a very, very strong solid result. This time I'm going to go with the, the stiffened felt just because it's a little more flexible and I just want to see what the result is like. So I've got those two pieces cut out. And so for the front detail on my little caravan, we have our pattern pieces cut out with fusible webbing applied. So we start with our little base piece. We've then got our little wheel arch. We've got our little door frame and our inside door. We have our little window frame and our little mock curtains there. So, and I'm going to be adding just some little words there. We're also going to be needing just a couple of buttons for this one. So we're going to need a button here that's going to be our closure. And we're going to be doing it up on the other side, just like on this one. So we need a button that coordinates and it does work in well with the project too. I'm also going to pop up a little light 
something that uh, imitates a little light up the top there to give it that very a very vintage vibe and of course we're going to be needing a nice big button for our wheel which I've got there that's about 30 millimeters that button so that's the front now you can imagine that you can use all sorts of colors you can add to that any way you like as usual I'm giving you the basic look and you can embellish that any way you wish now there's all sorts of things that you can do with it buttons and beads and all sorts of notions so the inside let's have a look at the inside and our layout on the inside we're going to start with over this side we're going to have a little pocket here so that's going to be stitched on gives us room to tuck some little things in there we're making a little needle bank here where we will have our two little pieces of felt uh, suitable for all of our needles we've got two there so you can have two layers we're going to be adding a couple of buttons there I've got a little lace trim at the top you can use any kinds of braids and things for this and any kind of buttons and trims I'm going to be adding a little yo-yo on this little patch pocket and I'll be showing you how to make those little fabric yo-yo so you need your little disc cut out and then on the other side we have all of our pieces to create the sort of interior cupboards of our little caravan camper so we have our cupboard base we've got the cupboard front and then we've got two little cupboard doors there where we're going to add these little strips of double felt which gives us another needle or pin bank this little one here this is for our little refrigerator or our little ice box that is actually going to be a little pocket a little bit more room for stashing things we've got here a little flower planter pot here that we're going to be adding and we're going to be adding some little stalks and some little flowers and the flowers are going to be you can use anything that you like I'm going to be using just some little tiny heart shaped buttons that are going to work for flowers and you could use beads perhaps do some little French knots whatever you like there then we need our little overhead canopy which you can see I've cut and some of these pieces I've cut with pinking shears now these pieces here all three of these I have and I like the pinking shears edging on that I've also added a little strip of lace there as well and that's going to be all secured into place with a couple of more coordinating buttons I'm going to be stitching through that so again this is a little flap where we can tuck things in we can also add some little clips and so on and we then will need well I'm going to add a nice little um, just a little hanging tag and I'm using my little printed text again that one is going to hang from either this little button here or here whatever you like we're going to do a little bit of blanket stitching on that one they can be decorated any way you like um, and then we're going to need I'm actually going to add a couple of little hooks on this one along the bottom here just to indicate sort of little cup hooks little mug hooks you might have all sorts of little notions like little tiny cup buttons or perhaps a little teapot button or something that can sit on that counter just absolutely be just creative with it now we've got our second button for the back closure that will be on here I've coordinated it with that felt we're going to need some clear craft glue something suitable for fabric and quick drying and we're going to need a pearl thread preferably a pearl thread this one's actually five ply I usually use eight ply but five ply works for this project because I'm going to be sewing all the way around the outside of that little caravan book when it's finished and I also will be using my extra strong thread for my other embroidery work and for some of my construction so it's very very straightforward to make and I just find them that they're just so much fun because as you're working on it all flat nothing difficult at all there so let's get started on our front and our first step with our front I'm going to pull everything off there and we're going to begin by removing our backing paper now most of those pieces that are cut out 
have a have fusible webbing on the back have a look at your pattern templates it will tell you what you need to apply to each of those individual pattern pieces that will be written on the pattern because some of them are just plain felt some of them are double felt um, but that's all there for you on the pattern so this one is ready to fuse on I'm going to fuse that one into place and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use now here's where you can do any kind of hand stitching you might want to do a blanket applique stitch you may want to do a straight mas machine stitch I'm actually going to be doing the same as I did on this one and I'm going to be doing a very close small little zigzag stitch almost an applique satin stitch um, so I'm quite close just to settle that one into place and I'm also going to go down just this side here as well so that's your very first task so there you can see my first piece has been zigzagged on and you can see the reason why I like using that little stitch for this project is because it keeps everything so neat and tidy and really really flat so now you can go ahead and add your wheel arch piece now I'm using felt for these pieces but you can use fabric of course you can use up all your little scraps um, I like the volume of felt which is why I tend to use it for some of these pieces so you can add your wheel arch your door frame and your window frame and I'm going to use that same stitch in that matching maroon thread around each of those pieces and also a good thing to remember that I didn't mention before when you're cutting out if any of your pieces are directional remember when you're cutting them out you've got to cut them out on the reverse so that they sit so that however you want them to sit on your project remember that you're cutting on the on the back of the fabric so it has to be reversed so we'll go ahead and get those little pieces stitched on so now my next pieces to go on once those are stitched on is the center of my door and my little mock curtains now this time with the curtains I'm going to be using a straight stitch and I'm also going to be stitching down the center there to indicate the center of those curtains parting and also just across to the edge with each of these and also all the way around that edge with the door I will probably just continue with that same little zigzag stitch there and you can also add if you want to add a little couple of stitches across for a little door handle or maybe you want to add a little button for the door handle that's entirely up to you so I'm going to go ahead and get those all stitched into place also right so there we go I've got my little front cover all completed there I have added my little words in there just stitched around those with a straight stitch and I've added each of my buttons I've decided to go with a little eclipse shape button there to indicate some kind of a handle on there and you can see how much you can add to that if you like you can make some pleating in those curtains anything that you like add as many buttons and embellishments as you wish I've got my button in place ready for my closing I've just popped that one in there so you can see how that will look so I'm happy with that this little button will be sewn on last so that is our completed front so we can pop that one aside and let's get started on the interior of our little needle case now the first piece to go down is this one and it is the back of the cupboard and the sink top there so I have pressed that one into place just about a centimeter from the base and it's really centered in the middle of this section of your cover I've got that one pressed into place and continued with my little um, zigzag stitch keeping everything still nice and flat because we're going to be adding a few pieces to this section so my next piece to go on will be to press into place this one also has fusible webbing applied and that one will be pressed on exactly into place to cover that section and I will go ahead with my same little zigzag stitch okay so our next pieces to go on are our little kitchen sink there and our little flower planter pot little kitchen sink you can see where I've got that positioned if you're unsure of your positioning of course just just lay out your other pieces so you get a good idea of it where everything's going to be I'm going to have our little fridge here and I just find that one sits nicely there little planter pot sits best right on that corner on the point and because 
our other overhead piece is coming in here just off center and we need room for our little button flowers there now you can see that what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've just used a very sharp polychromo pencil and I've just drawn in my stalk lines and I will be adding my little heart buttons to indicate my little flowers and I'll be stitching over those lines with green so they won't be seen that green pencil will only enhance what I've done there and you can see that's my little layout of course you might be using beads you may even have little tiny flower buttons or, or perhaps even sequins they'll work just as well that will be my little display there so I'm going to go to the machine I'm going to stitch with a straight stitch just around my little flower pot around my little sink and I'll stitch in my little stalk lines also I would like to say that for a little tap if you want to indicate a little tap a little hook from your hook and eyes a little hook gives that little bit of impression of a, a little tap there so if you want to add that you can go right ahead so now that I've got all of my little buttons and details in place there my next piece is to go on are my two covered fronts and I've pressed those on and I have just sewn a straight stitch this time around each of those and then I'm going to add I've got my two little uh, bars of double felt and they're going to just be stitched on across the front of each of those I will just be sewing a straight line across the top and the bottom just make sure they're all nicely lined up if it helps a little bit to add a little bit of craft glue to hold them in place while you're sewing them on that's fine so that's where our pins and needles can go another little spot for them and then we're going to add our little at the same time we're going to add our little ice box front now that sits right in the center there I've added just one little stitch of doubled pearl thread there just to indicate a little handle there and I've just top stitched the top edge and this is going to be a pocket so we're going to leave this top edge open and we're going to stitch that into place down those three sides there and make sure you back and forth at the start so that if we tuck little things in there it's not going to pull away so I'm just going to add those three pieces next right so my little cupboard is all finished now my next step is first of all on my little overhead uh, piece I've just stitch that little piece of lace into place there and now I'm just going to stitch each end in place and if you like you can stitch down the center there to create two little openings there that we can tuck things in there and once I've done that I'm going to just add my two little buttons just to detail those ends there and that will be our one side completed so there we go that has my one inside side completed you can see there I've got those little pockets there now where we can tuck things in there so everything's done there so my next step was to add I've pressed on my first little fabric piece I've got my pinking I use my pinking shears to cut the edges of that one but you don't have to it can just be straight so I've just sewn a straight stitch around those lower edges and then I've taken my two little felt plain felt pieces again with the pinking shears and I've just stitched them together at the top so they're going to hold together nicely those are going to be for our little two layers of needles or pins whatever you like to put there and I'm going to line that one up with the top take my little lace trim you can use anything you like there and I would just use a large zigzag and just stitch that little one into place and then I'm going to add my two little buttons either side just as I have with this one just to add that little bit more detail there and it also gives us something to hang our little tag from a little later so I'm going to get those pieces on and so once you've got that little your little needle keeps in place there I love how quickly this project comes together I thoroughly enjoy making these such a detailed looking little project it's really really quick 
So our next step is we're going to be adding our final little pocket there which is just our, I've cut it from my felt fabric. You can just use double felt if you like. Um, I just like to bring that print in that I've got on the front of the little camper there. Um, ties it all in together. But I am going to make a little fabric yo-yo to go on the front of that pocket which I'll need to add first. If you haven't made a felt yo-yo before, you just take your circle, I've given you a template there, and you just tie, you just sew a running stitch all the way around the edge on the right side of your fabric, as I have there. I've tied my first knot. Just keep your stitches nice and even and quite small so it pulls it in nicely. And then it is just simply a matter of pulling those threads in right the way in. And you'll want to, I've got my little knot ready just a matter of tying it off pulling that right in tying that off nice and tight make sure that you organize all your little gathers knot that one off snip those thread ends and I usually give them a little press just so those little gathers are nice and crisp and then I will sew that one to the front of my little pocket just using a coordinating button which covers that raw edge in the centre. So I'm going to go ahead and get that one into place. So you can see now that I've just added that little patch pocket. I've continued with my zigzag stitch and I have zigzagged that top edge before I put that on. So now we've got a nice little pocket there with that little detail on and now our next step is just to create your little tag. Now your little tag is just your double felt. You can do anything you like to that. I've just sewn a blanket stitch all around the outside with one of the contrasting colours. I've added my little word joy. You could add some little buttons, some beads and so on. You could even add some little beads on that little string there. That will just sit over that little button there and hang in place. And of course you can also add I will probably add some little safety pins with some little beads on it. It's just a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra joy there. Um, so that completes the inside of our little project. So now we're just going to move on. I'm just going to move that one out of the way for now. Our next step now is we're going to take our back and our front. I'm actually going to, before I do that, I will sew my other button exactly lining up with that one on the other side before I actually do this but I'll show you what I'm going to do now so we're going to put our pieces together and we're going to make sure they're really lined up now because I had to add put my two pieces of felt together in the beginning I've got a nice clear line there that shows me exactly where I need to stitch and that's what I'm going to do. I am going to sew straight down that center. I'll do that two times, make sure it's nice and secure. And then we're ready to add our filler on the inside. So my little needle book is now bound in the middle there. And now our next step is to add our fillers on each of those underneath pieces there. You can see I've done that there. I've just used my clear craft glue and got that one pressed nicely into place. Make sure you flip it over and really get it all pressed out nice and flat. You can see I've got my button on the other side there. And so both of those are now nicely glued into place. So my next step is just to add some glue to either surface, it doesn't matter and then press those two, line it all up. Don't worry if you've got a couple of little pieces that are a little bit not quite matching up, you can always trim those. We're going to be sewing a blanket stitch around the entire outside edge. So you just want to glue and press that one into place and then the same with this one. And we're gonna let that dry, really dry, before we're going to do our stitching. Now that that glue is all dry, we can go ahead and do our final stitching. Now what we're going to do is sew a blanket stitch around the entire outside edge of our little project. 
Now what we have to remember with this is our blanket stitch is going to be as visible on this side as it is going to be on the inside. So you have to make sure that your stitches are just as pretty either side and that's just a simple matter of making sure that you're going through evenly. Now if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before I'm going to put a link up the top there for you to a video of mine that shows you how to sew it. And yes, it does take a little bit of time, but in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. So I enjoy this stitch very much. I find it very relaxing. And once you've really mastered this stitch, it's really quite quick. So it's the best one for a binding. So we're going to start. I've gone in. I've just come in between those two layers there and my knot is hidden between those two layers. I've got a single strand. Now I'm using five ply pearl thread here. I usually use eight. I would prefer to use eight but I don't have the colour I need. So we're going to go with the five. I don't like the five usually. I like the effect but it tends to knot more as you're working with it. So I've taken my first stitch and I'm not going to make them too deep and what you have to remember is when you're going through your two layers you make sure that you're going straight through that you're not going in at an angle because if you go in at an angle it's not going to look the same on the other side so just nice small stitches blanket stitch we go through both layers and bring our needle out through that loop and pull that in tight and that creates the stitch that goes across the top there I always start on the back section and I always sew my blanket stitch for these you see what I mean about the knotting for these uh, little needle books the front cover is what you initially see so you're best off sewing your blanket stitch from this side so you can see there I'm just going to keep my stitches nice and even and that five ply actually gives a lovely effect because it is that slightly heavier weight and the project can definitely take that and it really does bind that edge so you can see there that's the effect we're after and we're just going to continue make sure that you're rotating your work as you go so that all your stitches are going out correctly and make your way around that entire outside edge so there I have all of my blanket stitching all done and you can see I've gone ahead and added my little tie. Now that's just two strands of my pearl thread tied up around this little button and that gives you a really simple closing to go around the other button. It's a really quick and easy way to close it and it holds it really well. If it becomes fatigued it's really easy to replace as well. Now I've gone ahead and sewn on my wheel button there now I've used, remember that I used um, stiffened felt in mine so my needle could still travel through um, all of those layers. If you have used cardstock in yours to add that button you will just want to sew it to the top layer. So you will just want to go through your button, through, take a little piece of your fabric underneath, through your button and tie it off. Um, and the other trick for sewing your button on, on the inside, is if you don't want your stitching to show, just add a little button on the other side too, because it works beautifully with the project. A little more detail is always nice. So I've just gone through both of those buttons and we've got a lovely, neat finish. So you can see there, that's the completed uh, little needle keep. And I've added my little my little swing tag there and I've added a few little coordinating little beads. It doesn't take much to really make this a pretty little project. Pins in place and all of your bits and pieces, whatever you like to keep in there, your little needle keep. And it does just occur to me, wouldn't this make the best little sewing kit to take away if you were camping and traveling? Such a great gift. So I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, then take a look at my little house one too. That one is there and I'm going to be definitely adding to this little series. So many ideas I have for these. You can see that little one on the inside. Very, very sweet, made up in exactly the same kind of way. So I really hope you've enjoyed making my little camper van needle book cover. 
Well, thank you for joining me today and making up this little one. I hope you enjoyed it as much as the little cottage one. I really do. I've got a lot more designs for these little needle, keep, needle keeps. I've got smaller ones and bigger ones and all sorts of things. They're all still in here. We've got to translate them to here, but I'll get there. So make sure you're following me on Instagram so that you can see that happen and see it go from in here to paper and then to a pattern for you all. Um, you can see all sorts of things that I like to be doing on my Instagram and uh, thanks for all the photos everyone Incredible incredible work happening. I've seen quite a few of the little cottage needle keeps Coming through. I'm just absolutely amazed and some of the old favorites and uh, come and check them out on my Pinterest board You can send me pictures for me to share of your work on my Pinterest board I've made just for you called you made it because you certainly did and uh, wonderful work there. Come along and have a look and, and see what everybody else is doing with my patterns. In the meantime, everybody, look forward to my next project. All you cat lovers out there, this one's going to be for you. And so everybody stay safe, stay positive and always pay all of those good things forward. Until next time, it's Huru from me.